Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at, we have uh, the Phase 2 Clone Trooper and the Battle Droid. So, um, as usual, you know, whenever I can get these, I try to get them in, in packs of two. Um, mainly because, like I've said many times before, my hope is, you know, I'll use these figures in like role-playing game settings or something like that. So having two of them gives me a little flexibility. And then as far as like the... The clone trooper, I can always put those in the background of like uh, stormtroopers or stormtroopers in the background for clone troopers or whatever. To say it's just a bunch of, you know, clone troopers, stormtroopers, or just troopers in general. Um, and then I do really like how the battle droid was done. Um, the fact that it can kind of fold up and everything else is really kind of a slick idea. Um, usually in a role playing game sense, I kind of like it as uh, backup characters for like starships and stuff like that. I can have them in there in case I need that extra firepower, extra muscle to move uh, <clears throat> cargo onto a ship or something like that, and then I can have them fold up or whatever. That concept I just really love. Uh, it, it just really adds extra ability to have characters on the fly uh, without really needing much. And sometimes their, their stats are very basic, but... Uh, you know, it, it, it does the job. So, um, looking at, at these and that, um, I'm going to get this one open. I've already got that one open. That way you can see how it comes, how it comes packaged. Uh, it is very nice as far as how these are packaged because when we open this up, this is really what we see. So here's their weapons. This is the antenna on the back. And then we have the two figures here just kind of set in there that's it so as far as trying to get everything unpackaged unlike the the blister wrap it is nice and easy but it's been pointed out so many times and i do agree um it is very nice to be able to see the actual figure there um instead of just a picture so uh i'm just unraveling these so you can see them now they don't have bases and i did pick up the bases here um on amazon so that's where i get the bases from these have been working pretty good and they they work for a wide variety of the six inch figure line so whether it's the star wars the gi joe uh i even had a valiverse um a figure there so it all worked out now we can take the helmet off this is the feast that we have i'll leave the helmet on on this one um let's see i didn't really go through all the uh joints and everything i just wanted to get the one set on package so you can see them and i'll kind of do these up a little separately uh, a little differently a little and, and that so we only have a single knee joint here and then we have our standard ankle um the armor doesn't seem to really affect it too much. It doesn't go way, way back, but it does kind of go back some. And, of course, then we have our twist up here in the thigh. And then as far as our arm goes, we only have the single elbow here. We do have our twist up here on our, um, just below our shoulder here. This doesn't move. This one, you know, our wrist kind of goes back and forth. We only have the two hands and they are uh, set for holding on to a rifle in either hand. So that works out pretty good. The armor looks pretty nice. We have our little decal there. The early view uh, being the uh, phase two, we start getting a little bit more of our later stormtrooper look here with our uh, rebreather, as well as our classic view uh, from the clone troopers. And on the back, we have our standard look here. It looks really nice. It really does. And it sits on here pretty good. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, getting them onto the base here works pretty good. He's got the, the pegs, and I think I saw, showed you that. Uh, the holes for the pegs here are in the front of the feet. I don't know why they put them on the front, but they did. And they do stand pretty well on here, so that works out pretty well. Um, torso twisting, we can kind of do that a little bit. 
So we do have that up available. The armor does not get in the way. So for those that are trying to do dioramas of this, that will work very well. All right. And then looking at our stuff here. So like I said, uh, in the little package, I have just the antenna, which is what this battle droid has. So we have just the antenna on him. Get him kind of on here a little bit better, maybe. Oh, come on. I thought it was on the heel. There we go. So uh, he has just the antenna on here. So uh, in that regard, uh, he's going to be more of a short range. Uh, he's not going to have the extra battery pack to be able to keep him going a little bit longer. Um, so we can kind of do it that way. Or just trying to get him out here as we take a look at him. But then we also have the other the other weapons because I did want to show you that. So we do have the bigger battery pack that does sit on there. And I'm going to excuse me, and I'll put that on onto the battle droid here. So it sits on there like that, and this extends. So we have had another version of this, um, a, a different coloration. It's really the same battle droid, but it does look really nice. It's nice having the original coloring. Uh, that way I can have a special one that somebody's kind of made up. And then this should fold up fairly nice. There is little grooves in the legs, so the legs can kind of fold up nicely here. And then the arms are supposed to... See, so we have our twist here just below the shoulder. And then we have a twist down here. Um, let's see. You know, I can't... It's been a little bit since I saw... Uh, the Phantom Menace, where you got to see how the clone or the droids really folded up, but I do remember they f they had folded up really nicely, um, but I can't remember exactly how they did it. If it was their arms down at their knees, or if there was if it was over their chest, but I know it was done so that way they could take up the least amount of space. Our <clears throat> our wrist moves. And it can go back and forth a little bit. So we do have, you know, this is not the heaviest duty joint here. So just please do be careful of that. So you can move the wrist back and forth. And then the head. Let's see. Oh, come on. I remember I had problems with it the first time I did this too. Um... Does that go down? Does it go up? Actually, I think without the backpack on, and we can try that here in a minute with the other one, I think the head actually goes down a little bit. So, And of course, the pegs for the feet are on the heels. So depending on which one you have, uh, or whether you're the clone trooper or the battle droid, you know, you're going to have to either go more in the have the pegs on the front side or in the back side so we can do it that way um, and you know, I was trying to see with the with the head does this come up a little bit more yes it, it does and then the head goes down so it pulls up a little bit that way you get get that and you can kind of lift it up, slide that back down. I knew it worked somehow in there, but I just could not remember exactly how. And they had some nice, funny personalities. I mean, they were basic, basic AI-controlled droids. They knew what they needed to know. Um, but beyond that, they were meant to be run by either a, a central computer. Uh, I think the backpack, giving them an extra battery power and they did increase the AI on the later versions so that way they were a little bit more self-thinking. Now we do have the nice long rifle here for the clone troopers. 
Um, you know, it's a different take. I don't know. This looks like it could be a scope that could be mounted on top, but however, it's all set to go. You know, this is the, the standard long rifle for clone troopers. So we could either outfit them with that. We do have the blaster carbine. So we have that there. And then, uh, of course, the droids have their carbine as well. And that's what, what they come with. Now, none of the uh, magazines come out or anything else. So they're all stuck in there, which is perfectly fine. Now, this should be able to sit in a backpack somewhere. And if I remember correctly, it fits very much like that. So we do have a little notch here that fits into the backpack. And then that way you can have them folded up like they're in transport or in storage. And then here we are. Yep. And then it falls off. Seems to be my standard. I get it in there and then I kind of knock it off. All right. Okay, so, you know, it gives us some versatility with the the figures, depending on how you want to have them. If you want to have them, say, like in a corner or something like that, in your diorama, uh, maybe with some other stuff kind of stacked on top of it, you can kind of do that. Or if you want them just sitting there by themselves, uh, like they're ready to go, however you want to do it. You know, I think a funny thing would be, is even if you had one, and it's like it's been sitting there a while and you have like <laughs> like a jacket or something hanging off of a shoulder. Uh, it would be even funnier if you could do it. And I don't know how you would, but like a sock over its nose or something like that. Like someone's been using it as a decoration. And, you know, as they were getting changed or whatever, I need some place to go with a jacket. So here it is. And they threw their sock and it landed on their nose. I think that would be hilarious. Uh, just being me being silly. But... Uh, I think that would just be funny. All right, so uh, giving the finger in here, this does work out pretty well. Uh, the articulation works pretty good here. The only thing is, is we don't have a backpack here or some other place to put our uh, our carving here. But I mean the fact that. Between the two of them, I have an extra carbine and an extra long rifle here, um, as well as an extra um, communications antenna. But it is pretty neat, pretty slick. I really do like like these. Um, but you know, I'm a I'm a fan of the droids just because I think it's a cool concept. Um, and here we are. We're we're in a day and age where droids are becoming a real uh, realization uh, if you have twenty thousand dollars you want to spend on a droid you can now order one uh, obviously not like this it looks a little bit more humanish than than the skeletal look of these but it is something that's starting to go already in our own world um, god help us all hopefully it doesn't turn out to be like the terminator um go from there although i have my own little jokes about that because uh, knowing how computers go they get glitches in them so i, I always like to think that you know you're going to have like the battle droids the terminators or whatever and they're going to go and say destroy all humans and then they're going to get glitches in there and you're going to have one that's looking for butterflies one that's trying to kill all squirrels um another one thinks it's a ballerina and you have about 20 out of a thousand that are actually trying to do the original programming. So um, that's my own little joke take on the whole thing, right or wrong. Uh, you know, because like I said, computers do get glitches in them. And if it's there's a bug in the programming and it doesn't know that there's that bug, it just keeps replicating itself. And then there we are. So who knows? Time will tell. But with that, thank you so very much for stopping by. Thanks for visiting around the pool table. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.